ever had to choose between two options, weighing up the cost and benefit of each of them. This can be really tricky, especially when both options presented are very similar. But in the end, you must make a trade-off. You can only choose one because simply put, the benefits of one of them outweigh the costs of the other. Iguanas are the most wide-ranging lizard family in the Western Hemisphere. It's no surprise that they are exceedingly diverse, ranging from rock dwellers to tree dwellers, their bodies perfectly shaped to their specialized lives. The long toes and hind limbs of the mainland's spiny-tailed iguanas allow them to quickly move across terrestrial terrain. Green iguanas have even longer limbs, toes and tails, allowing them to masterfully climb trees. Each type of limb comes with a trade-off. They are either exceptionally fast runners or exceptionally good climbers, but never both. Speed is the difference between life and death. The speed at which iguanas move can be increased with their stride length or frequency. Terrestrial iguanas increase their stride length, whereas arboreal iguanas increase their stride frequency. But what would happen if an iguana chose an even more unusual way of life? Trade-offs. Should iguanas live on land? Or in the sea? Or why not both? This is the Galapagos marine iguana. They move both on land and through the sea with complete ease. They dive deep into the ocean to feed on red and green algae. These iguanas are able to move like this because the angles at which they can place their knee, ankle and metatarsal have increased as well as their femur rotation and retraction. All it really means is that they now take much longer strides with their shorter limbs. These long strides and angular changes cause them to run with an almost upright posture. This allows them to best navigate conflicting rocky and slippery wet surfaces. But they can't run as fast as their ancestors, so this is their trade-off. These marine iguanas have wide heads, blunt snouts and shorter necks, so they are well suited to eating underwater. In general, they are much bigger than their mainland relatives, so they lose less heat when foraging in cold waters. This cold slows their muscles down, so they can't move as quick. This is the same for all iguanas. They have to sit still in the sun to warm their bodies back up. This makes them vulnerable to being attacked by predators. In most other environments that iguanas can be found, being slow would reduce their chance of survival. Natural predators would take full advantage of their inability to escape. For the marine iguana of the Galapagos Islands, this is not the case as there are very few predators. It might just be that simple. I guess sometimes you can have your algae and eat it. <laughs>